recounting the story of the Indian Cancer Research Center or the ICRC, afterwards called the Cancer Research Institute or just CRI for short, one has to start with Dr. Vasant Ramji Khanolkar. It all originated in the pathology laboratories of the Tata Memorial Hospital, where Professor V. R. Khanolkar was the director of the pathology and biochemistry laboratories. He was a great visionary in the field of medicine. His vision led to the establishment of the Indian Cancer Research Center on the 30th of December 1952 under the Ministry of Health, Government of India. Thereafter, in 1966, the Tata Memorial Hospital and ICRC were amalgamated to create the first comprehensive cancer center in India, the Tata Memorial Center, as a grant-in-aid institution under the Department of Atomic Energy. ICRC was rechristened to Cancer Research Institute at that juncture. Till date, the institute flowers with the support of Department of Atomic Energy. Research activities of the institute have also been supported through extramural funding from several national and international funding bodies. Till 1963, Dr. Khanolkar not only strengthened the core infrastructure but also set up an excellent library an animal house, common instruments, essential facilities and workshops that have evolved over the times to support the institute till date. The CRI has been the flagship of biomedical research in independent India, serving as a cradle for several independent institutions to emerge from it. Following Dr. Khanolkar, Eminent scientists in succession led the institute and guided its activities, bringing it to its present stature, where it is recognized worldwide as a premier center for research on cancer. Dr. Dio was at the helm for 17 years. When I arrived at the institute in 1978, biomedicine witnessed two major developments, revolutionary developments double helix on one side and immunology, the two fields which still dominate biomedical research. And it was a major challenge for me and my colleagues at the Cancer Institute to shift our research from cellular to molecular level. As the institute grew, gave way to the foundation of a new large campus at Navi Mumbai, ACTREC Advanced Center for Treatment, Research and Education in Cancer. Dr. S. S. Agarwal has since taken over as the first director of ACTREC and has been responsible for planning and commissioning of the move of the Cancer Research Institute to its new site with Dr. S. M. Zingre, Deputy Director of CRI. As the name implies, ACTREC will not only have the CRI, but will also have CRC. Uh, naturally, our mandate is now much bigger and also in post-genomic era, uh, we will have to look into the present opportunities and challenges to mold our program of the CRI at the new campus. Uh, two things that are uh, shaping up really in the field of uh, modern biology and research is the genomics and proteomics with reference to uh, a study of the whole set of genes rather than single genes. And the second is our ability now to uh, analyze and dissect the variation in response to uh, treatment at the genomic level. And both these uh, opportunities to uh, characterize the tumors at the molecular level uh, and to uh, look into the genetic variation response, uh, we should exploit it for development of uh, diagnostics and therapeutics uh, for cancer. Uh, for the coming uh, generation. Uh, it's a new institution and uh, uh, it's good that uh, the, uh, at the occasion of completing our 50 years, we have got this uh, gift of uh, charting our new course uh, for the future of this institute.
The growth of the institute has also been possible with the contribution of innumerable scientists, technical and administrative personnel, and students who have worked selflessly for the institute. Research, training, and education are the focus of the institute. Oral cancer represents about 30% of all cancers seen in males in the country. It is associated with lifestyles and growing popularity of chewing tobacco, pan and gutka. Well-designed animal studies at the institute have shown that gutka has tumor promoting as well as progressor activity, suggesting that gutka consumption may pose a higher carcinogenic risk amongst chronic habitues. Over the years, studies on cancer have evolved from cellular to molecular and now to a multi-molecular global analysis. With the advent of the recombinant DNA era and the identification of genes involved in cancer, the focus changed to oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. This provided a sequence of genetic events that led from leukoplakia to frank cancer. The information generated led to a multi-institutional national study of specific molecular markers which can be used to predict the onset of oral cancer and its prognosis from basic to translational research. Another major contribution from the Institute is the recognition of ethnic differences in the susceptibility of an individual to oral cancer caused by tobacco. The recognition that several genes are altered in cancer has necessitated their analysis simultaneously such that all the genes and their protein products can be analyzed. This is possible in the post-genome era wherein technologies such as genomics, proteomics and related bioinformatics are available. The institute along with the Tata Memorial Hospital and five other leading institutes in the country have undertaken to analyze globally these changes in oral cancers. Chemotherapeutic regimes and radiotherapy have their limitations. To overcome these, gene therapy has come into focus. The institute has initiated a program to use a suicide gene to kill oral cancer cells. A xenograft model of human oral cancer has been developed in nude mice for studies on gene therapy. The success of the preclinical studies in mice has laid the foundation for phase 1 clinical trials. At ACTREC, facilities are being developed for preparation of gene therapy reagents under good manufacturing practices, a basic and crucial necessity for human trials. Research from the Institute has shown that a dietary constituent such as haldi and its active component, curcumin, has a chemopreventive action. Interesting leads are expected for the prevention of cancer with the components in tea and grapes. Cancer of the breast is a major cancer burden of the country. Studies from the Institute in the early years showed that there is a genetic susceptibility and role of hormonal stimulation in breast cancer. From animal studies done in this institute, the ICR sea mouse was developed. It showed high incidence of breast cancer. These studies led to the identification of a milk bone tumor inducing agent. The mammary tumor viruses were characterized and the viral etiology of human breast cancer was recognized. This was one of the earliest classic contributions from the Institute. About 5% of breast cancer patients show an early onset familial pattern. Studies from the Institute show that specific genetic alterations and weakened immune responses are potential markers for the identification of individuals with a high risk of breast cancer. Chronic hepatitis B virus infection is associated with a hundredfold higher risk of developing liver cancer. High incidence of hepatitis B has necessitated in-depth molecular studies. These studies indicate that the HBX protein plays an important role. For this purpose, 
sensitive methodologies such as RT-PCR are being used to measure the presence of this gene and its product as potential markers to follow viral infection. Leukemias and lymphomas, which comprise about 10% of the total cancer burden, has been the focus of several investigations. The institute, since its inception, has been interested in the genetic aspects of cancer. It therefore started studying the relationship between blood groups and cancer. And this work of this group ultimately led to the discovery of a new blood group called the Bombay blood group, which has been accepted universally. The institute has always kept up with new technologies and introduced a new laboratory called the Hybridoma Laboratory when the technique of monoclonal antibodies was introduced world over. The Hybridoma Laboratory has developed monoclonal antibodies to oral cancers which can be used in the diagnosis not only of oral cancers but also other carcinomas. We have also developed monoclonal antibodies for the diagnosis of leukemias. Recent investigations from the institute have provided the technology for the isolation of stem cells from umbilical cord blood useful for treatment of blood disorders. Immunological aspects of leukemias, lymphomas and functional alterations in leukemic cells have also received attention. In addition to studies on human cancer, experimental systems and animal models are used to determine the basis of cellular transformation. The institute boasts of excellence in breeding and maintaining specific strains of animals. New mouse models have been established and characterized for their sensitivity to carcinogenic agents. One of these has been used to study esophageal and the other for skin cancers. These animals have been used to study the cancer-causing effects of pan masala and gutka. The institute is the first in the country to generate transgenic mouse. This mouse model which hosts a gene for a growth factor modulator, is good for investigations of squamous cell carcinoma. Research work from the Institute has been published in well-reviewed and recognized national and international journals. The Institute takes pride on being awarded patents for an alternate method of synthesis of methotrexate for the isolation of topoisomerase inhibitor podophilotoxin and a 2KB nucleotide sequence that is specific for the early detection of oral cancer. An indigenous serodiagnostic western blot kit for HIV-1 and 2 has been developed with support from DBT and J. Mitra and Sons. A national facility for screening anti-cancer drugs using a panel of human malignant cell lines has been established. It also has an in vivo drug testing facility on murine tumors and human tumor xenografts in nude mice. The Institute's position as a front runner in cancer research has been possible due to contributions from dedicated people and the appropriate infrastructure. The Institute has state of the art sophisticated equipment and facilities in its common instrument room. Over the years, the Institute has also worked on projects of medical relevance. A vaccine for leprosy was prepared from killed ICRC bacilli and has undergone large-scale trials. Bhopal gas tragedy victims were examined for mutagenic, genotoxic and teratogenic effects of methyl isothiocyanate. Scientists of the Institute are recognized guides for the University of Mumbai. At any time, there are about 35 students registered for a doctorate program. Senior scientists of the Institute are members of a number of national committees and university faculties and boards. Several of them have received prestigious awards and have been elected to the scientific bodies in the country. The Institute has conducted national and international workshops and conferences. The Institute also provides in-house training to scientists from other institutes and universities and summer training to a number of students. 
the seeds sown then by Dr. Khanolkar in 1952 has today flowered into a 60-acre facility, Atrek, the R&D satellite of the Tata Memorial Center. This is being established as a specialized center of TMC for frontline basic and clinical research in the field of cancer to meet the challenges of the new millennium. The Tata Memorial Center and the Department of Atomic Energy again fulfills an objective of service, education and research. The Cancer Research Institute along with the Clinical Research Center together with the Tata Memorial Hospital will play a pivotal role in the future for the cutting edge of science and technology along with basic and clinical research, drug development and other areas uh, extremely crucial for cancer in India today. With this milestone, the Tata Memorial Center approaches a new era with benefits to the people of our country.